Hello everyone. Today we are going to start a short series on malware analysis and uh, this is going to be four or five videos maximum maybe uh, and uh, we'll see that uh, how much content we can cover in that. The videos are going to be very um, short, they won't be longer, um, but we'll try to cover as much as possible and to the point. Um, um, so the first thing that we're going to discuss is what is malware. So the first thing is that it's a software. Anything, it's a piece of code that works on a computer system. But of course, the intentions of this uh, software, since it's a malicious software, uh, it's a malicious code, the intention of this software is to cause harm to a user, computer, or an environment. So that is why it's called a malicious software. And in short, it's known as the malware. So anything that can cause a harm in any form or shape to the computer, the user, or the whole network is known as the malware. Now, it could be a virus, it could be a Trojan, worm, or a ransomware. That totally depends how the software has been written. For example, in case of the virus, it would be a piece of code that spreads between the computers and causes damage, damage to data and the softwares. So anything, uh, the key thing that you want to know about the computer virus is that it is designed specially to spread. It attaches itself to the host file, any of the host file, any executable, and the more that file gets executed, the more this malicious code gets spread across the computers, across the networks or the drives. Another type would be the Trojan. It's aimed at taking control of a user's computer, stealing data, or inserting more malwares onto the victim's computer. But the special thing about the Trojan is that it acts like a legitimate program on any computer. And the ransomware is a malware that is specifically designed to ensure that the user cannot use the computer unless he pays the ransomware. Now, this has been very common in, um, in these days, and we will discuss it further in the, not in this video, but in the next videos. So what is malware analysis? The process of studying the malware by what do we mean by studying the malware is identifying a malware that there is some problem within the network <clears throat> or within the computer some unexpected changes are happening within the computer or in the network that is that when you are starting to identify that there is something problem in your environment once you have caught the file or once you have the information about the, the malware within your computer or uh, in the network, then you start working more on that. What exactly is the functionality of that malware? What are the things, what are the behavioral changes that this malware brings when it is executed? Or what are the intentions of it um, when it will be executed? What are the intentions or objective that it is trying to achieve? And, and the main objective would be what are the countermeasures that you can that you can uh, put in place to effectively reduce the uh, the effectiveness of that particular malware so the question is that why would somebody want to do the malware analysis so some of the key points that we have mentioned over here are the malware behavior the team or the malware analyst who is doing the malware analysis would like to understand the behavior of a particular file. Any malware in your environment that is creating havoc needs to be understood that what exactly are the capabilities of this particular file? Does it just stay on that particular computer where it has been downloaded? Does it make that computer useless? Does it consume lots of CPU? Does it make any changes in the registry? Does it create any processes? Do those processes connect to those in 
to to the internet during those internet connections are there any other files that are being downloaded and even if there are what kind of further behavior is being executed and what are the intentions for example the second step would be that taking those behaviors into your account what are the motivations that this malware is trying to achieve is it causing any registry changes that would be used to uh, achieve persistence in your environment that the malware wants to hide itself for a longer period of time and it wants to stay within the environment to execute again and again are there any other behaviors where the malware wants to escalate its privileges now this is a behavior but the motivation is that the attacker wants to have more control on the computer or within the environment so these kind of behaviors will be studied and the malware analyst will try to create a profile of a threat that what kind of threat this malware upon its execution is showing in the environment is it something that the attacker wants some financial benefit is it something that the attack attacker wants to just uh, disrupt the operations so these kind of things will be studied during the malware analysis and these are important to for the malware analyst to analyze and uh, for example the threat actor if there is a behavior in the uh, in the uh, in the in the region which is affecting every other country or every other environment within the same sector is it the same actor that is trying to achieve those objectives in that particular sector for example is it the financial sector that is being targeted again and again could it be that it's the same actor but the different uh, victims could it be that the actors are different now these things will be analyzed during this malware analysis for example we will do the mapping between one actor that okay if there is one actor x we know that this actor uses these particular techniques and the malware that is being used by these actors are xyz and the motivation is let's say financial gains the other threat actor could have some other goals that they want to achieve similarly when you are doing the malware analysis you will like to have the indicators of compromise and the attacks uh, as an artifact to be recorded for later use based on the last slide we will discuss about quickly the objectives of the malware analysis so first and foremost is the contextual information that is very important that we need to understand that in what context the malware has been executed what is now this contextual information could be related to your uh, line of business are other entities in the same line of business being targeted again and again and again is it a campaign that is being run on a particular sector for example a financial sector is being targeted again and again or is it that the it industry in particular for example some specific um framework php framework or a website is being targeted again and again it could be that there is a vulnerability that has been um, exposed and now everybody is trying to uh, exploit that vulnerability and they are targeting some specific vendor now the second objective would be the artifacts collection that the malware that is being used what are the actions that it is doing and for example what are the hashes that are being seen in those attacks in those campaigns what are the different links that are being used to connect on the internet what are the different processes that are being executed what are the different behavioral changes that are being done on the system now these kind of things for example hashes ips urls uh internet connections these kind of things are called the artifacts that you have you can get from the malware analysis and they become very important which during the um recommendation phase when you are actually telling the teams 
how can they defend how can they protect themselves during the attack campaigns then you have the behavior understanding that what are the things that we have seen malware doing and there could be that the malware has not shown its true behavior currently and the malware analysts can do those uh, analysis to execute the malware in their labs and understand that what are the behaviors that could be not shown at the moment similarly once you have done the uh, malware analysis the main objective is using those information using those indicators that you have extracted using the behavior that you have extracted you can enhance your defense you can create your your, your own use cases you can automate the response to those uh, attack patterns and um, that's the main thing which will help the security uh, which will help the uh, the entity to improve its security posture so the next thing would be the stages of malware sorry the stages of malware analysis now there are four different stages one is the most easiest one is the automated the second is static dynamic and then the manual one in the automated malware analysis all you have to do is you take up your file of the malware upload it in a sandbox and the sandbox will run it all by itself the file that you have uploaded and give you a simple report on what the sandbox things has been done and you get the report and you can read, go through that. That's the easiest part. The second part would be, and there are lots of online available automated sandboxes that can do this for you. Any file that you upload, they will give you the whole report that how this file has behaved in their sandbox. The second would be static in which you are not digging deep in fact, you're only going to understand, you're not going to run the, so the malicious software. All you are going to do is understand that what this file is, is it an executable, is it a DLL, and what is the hash of it, how much is the size, uh, has it been seen anywhere else. Lastly, you can use some tools to understand that what kind of uh, strings are in there in that particular file, which will give you an indication of a little bit of the behavior of that particular file. In the dynamic, you actually run the malicious software in a safe environment and you run the processes, you check the processes that are executed when you run that. Then you see what are the changes in the system that upon running the malware are done then you see if there are any internet connections that are being made by this um, uh, malware. So in short, you will see that are there any registry changes? If there are any file systems changing on the file system, then there are any process activity. And the lastly, all you have to do is check if there are, are any network connections being made when you're doing the dynamic analysis. And the last, the most difficult part is the manual analysis that is where when you open this particular piece of file the piece of malware in a tool where you will actually go through the code of that particular exec executable and then understand that how that uh, executable has been developed in terms of code and what kind of um, further information that you can extract from the code itself in most cases, the manual malware analysis is not required, but uh, it's a good to have skill and one should always learn that. We will discuss this also in the upcoming videos. So how do you do that? First of all, what you have to do is protect yourself. Use any, any all the criteria to protect yourself will be discussed. For example, use VPN. Do not let other people know about your IP from where you are coming in. Use any VPN that is available, open VPN or from your own organizational VPN or any other thing, depending on your organizational policy, of course. Then protect your machine. If you are at, if your machine is attached to a network, preferably disconnected from the network, use virtual machine that is on uh, host only that cannot make any internet connections outside of your machine, outside of the VM. 
and preferably use any VMs that are isolated from the network as bef discussed before. Any machine that is connected to the internet can cause a problem for uh, when, when you're doing the malware analysis. Some of the online resources that are helpful are VirusTotal, VirusScan, Hybrid Analysis, and Any.Run. So the VirusTotal, it's a free service that can analyze your files and URLs for viruses, worms, and uh, the similar thing is the virus scan. It's an also free online scan server, which will check your uploaded files for malware. Hybrid analysis is something that is that comes under the dynamic analysis because it will uh, do the uh, memory dump analysis to extract all the possible execution pathways for a particular malware. And any Neutron is also a uh, interactive, interactive malware sandbox which will generate both of these will generate a, a report to help you understand that the different uh, pathways that a malware can take. So that's the basic introduction or to the malware analysis where we discussed the what is the malware, what is the malware analysis, what are the objectives and why should we do that and the stages of malware. Stay tuned for uh, the next video on uh, uh, the static malware where we will execute a file and see if we can uh, do the malware analysis, the static malware, and we'll see if we have time, we will do the uh, dynamic also in the next video. Stay tuned. Thank you so much.